All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to the channel again. Um, tonight, I'm just gonna um make some um place rigs for tonight. Well, play some flounder rigs, platy rigs, basically. Um, <clears throat> I'll start off on um making a basic um two hook flapper rig, and then um I'll um I'll show you how some of my um clip down clip down rigs that I sometimes use um on the beaches as well when I'm targeting place um. One sec, trying to get this line off. Um, so I will start off on um, making a flapper rig first. Um, I'll just take you through all the bit, all the basics of um, of uh, making a flapper rig. Bloody hell, this is a nightmare to get off with them scissors. Oh. I hate un unraveling new line like. <laughs> Bloody nightmare to get out of the packaging, all the little bits of plastic and that that's wrapped around it. Oh dear. There we go. This is just um the hook lens that I'll be using. It's just um twenty pound trialine big game. A lot of lads like to use different colour lines and whatnot. I mean <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't think flatfish really care as long as it's as long as it's fairly light. I mean caught fish before on like heavy line you know fishing off beaches for like most of heavy line 50 pound um hook limbs when you're fishing for like bass and smooth arms off beaches but um i don't think it really matters a lot, a lot of lads that fish local um but i've noticed all the other top lads like to use like red line and that but to be honest with you i just use this <laughs> and i catch just as much place as anyone on my local piers and that's so uh, it, it does work like so um i normally use 50 pound asso line or 50 pounds takuma line for my rig bodies um i ha don't know if i've got enough to make the rig or the rigs i want for tonight on on this this what i've got because i don't think i've got much much uh, much line on here like but if um if i run out of this say i've got that 80 pound um I saw a line over here what I was using on uh, for my rig buddies for my pulley rigs fishing for play uh, fishing for cod sorry um I mean it doesn't really matter I mean it's just the it's just for the rig body it's, just, it's not for the hook length so you know what I mean so it depends what I mean it's each to their own like but when I'm fishing for place off my local peers I like to fish, like my uncle told me this, my uncle Tony and my granddad and that, they like to fish. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, there's that there, and my other hand's down here, like a dead long um, body. So you, your two hook limb, like I use two hooks, like, you know, one at the top and one at the bottom. Um, gives you more movement, I like, in the water, and obviously place and flounders and things like that, they absolutely love movement. So, like, when you two, your flapper rigs, Two, with your two hooks basically for your flapper rigs when they're waffing around in the tide and when the tide's like just like pulling nicely the place love it like the love the um the love the movement it, it, it basically it's like a trigger to them they say like a worm moving on the bed or a sand deal or whatnot on your like your long well on your traces they have they have to have it because they can't resist they can't resist the movement um but i know i know lads that fish very short rigs like that um there's a lot of know that uh <laughs> i'll give him a shout actually yeah uh, liam noblet <laughs> he likes to fish very short with um beads and booms and and he does well very well for players fishing that way so it's it each to their own i mean i like movement but other people don't so it's up it's it, as i say it's each to their own um but this is how i do it anyways um so oh christ how long's that Say it's nearly getting on two foot of uh, a rig body that like, but that's what I like. So what you do is get that, snip it off like that. And what I've got is, I've got a Gemini, just basically one of these, little Gemini clip. What I'll do is I'll just tie it on at the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look not as well, by the way, because I, when I was making my cod traces earlier on in the season when I did a video, I didn't know what this knot was called, what my granddad always taught me how to use. 
and it's a blood knot so at least we um at least we know now just nip that off so it's this is um different com obviously completely different to a pulley rig this um just whack out loads of loud bits when i need so basically we have i don't know if you can see that a little wee crimp and what you'll do is you'll just put it on like that slide it down and then have I got any small swivels? I have got small swivels. Small barrel swivel. Hold on. Did that run nearly. <laughs> Can tell I haven't made flat rigs for a while. <laughs> so you've got your crimp, then you've got your bead. Any bead will do. As long as it doesn't go through the hoop the hoop of the um the swivel, which obviously these won't because they're only small swivels. And you swivel, then another bead. Down like that, and then the crimp again. Slide that down. There we go. So what you do is when you come to the obviously there's the um, the bottom of it there. So what so what you'll do is you'll just get like a pair of pliers like so. Don't crimp it dead hard, Christ. Don't crimp it rock hard. Let it move a little bit because if you crimp it too hard, there, eh, it can snap your liner. You know it can snap. Crimp that a bit too light. Just needs a little bit more. Not too much. There we go, that's enough. Perfect. Bang in there. So I like to leave like a little bit of movement as well in between the um the two crimps. I like to leave a little bit of movement. So it's better when it wafts around in the tider, you know. Let's crimp try and crimp it a bit more. Uh, Nightmare. There we go. So that's the bottom uh, the bottom one done. Now we'll do the top one. Same principle. It's exactly the same. Crimp. Go through. There we go. Crimp. Bead. A small swivel. Small barrel swivel. Bead. And another crimp. There we go. And then for the yeah, I'm not using that crap that. <laughs> um, and then it's like another small barrel swivel for the um, the top of like where you're actually gonna like obviously this is the top of the trace now. So one, two, three, five, six, through. Wet it and pull it like that. Snip that little tag off. So bring these back up, the one, the crimps that you've just put on. And what we do is, there's the top of your that obviously that, that swivel there, that top of there, that's what clips onto your main line or your main, or your, your swivel that's attached to your, your braid or your line, whatever you're using. That just clips onto there. And obviously then you fish, that's your actual fishing trace, you know. So, what I'll do is, I'll maybe crimp it about here, stab that in, stab that one in, that's enough. And obviously I like to leave a little bit of, um, a little bit there, crimp that in, I think that's crimp, good, yeah that's crimp great. There you go, so there's the body made, that'll be your where your bottom hook's going to be, and obviously that's going to be where your top hook's going to be. So I'll get my twenty pound trialing big game, and what we'll do is your top hook. Same crack, blood knot. One, two, three, five, six. Six twists is enough. Like six, seven twists is ideal. Like that, and then we'll pull it wet. Pull, sorted. Crimp that bit off. Off into the rubbish pile. Now then, what I'll do is I'll just measure. Obviously, you don't want it to connect in with your bottom hook because it will get tangled all the time. So you just want it just above where the top hook's going to be. Uh, sorry, where the bottom hook's going to be. So you're going to measure it like that. So that's roughly about the top hook, where the bottom hook is. 
cut that off there. And hook sizes is, um, I mean, anything from a size four to a size one, I'd probably recommend. Um, any, I uh, as I say, any any size between a size four and a size two, a uh, size one, sorry, is probably um what you want for flat is like. Um, I like to use, well, say I like to use size twos, camazans. There you go, little wee hook, very small. Um, so ninety five of my flat percent of my flat is I hook them. Um, it's very rare odd yans get off, but you do it does happen like it. <laughs> You can't hook every single fish that you that, that goes for your bait. You know, odd ones will come off like. Um, so what we'll do is with the top hook, same crack, we'll do a blood knot. What did? Pull it. Sorted. I'll just measure this with the, um... oh, it's perfect. A nice, um, nice top hook length. There you go. Oh, and the, <laughs> yeah, I don't like to use um, what folk would call um, bling for players. I don't use it. Like, I don't, um, it might make, it might make a difference on the, on some days, like, but to be fair, with the quality of bait that you get, well, that I get like um, you don't really, you don't really need like bling and that. The bait's good enough to catch the fish, you know. Seven. Sorry. Crimp it off. Over there. Now the bottom hook, about that long again, about a foot and a half, two foot or something. Chop that off. See, with the gear that I use on my local piers, like if I'm, you know, not fish, not fishing far out, obviously, of course. Um, I just use, obviously, with the the, the rod I use, I use a um. A fifteen to forty-five gram rod there, so it's obviously it's not it's not heavy at all. Um, so I just use two ounce sinkers really, because obviously I'm just fishing with a light rod and uh, little little two ounce bomb. That's all I use because obviously I'm just fishing with a light rod. I mean, you can fish with anything between an ounce to four, five ounce. You know, it would depend on what rod rod you prefer to use. But obviously, I like fishing light because obviously you get hell of a lot more sports out of um out of your fish with fishing with a tiny rod so there's my two ounce lead here we go i'll, I'll try and um move the camera around just so you can see what i've actually made so there's that there. right guys where are we at here So that's like your two ounce sinker on the seabed there. Obviously, there's the um, there's a dog cage. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think this is gonna work. <laughs> nah, it's too um, doesn't matter. Um, but anyways, I'll sit down and do this bit actually, because it wouldn't work. So basically, there's the top of your trace. Size two cameras on down the body of the um, of the half of the flapper rig. There's my two on sinker. Again, foot and a half, two foot, maybe even a bit longer. Another size two cameras on hook with twenty pound um, trialing big game. And as I say, that rig, them hooks, not weird. Has brought me. I was going to say. I was going to swear. Then has brought me loads, loads of success with players on my local pier. Um. So yeah. Uh. People might disagree with how I fish, but it's brought me a ton of success. So they can't really um argue with me against it. 
So, yeah, to all the superstars out there <laughs> that always try and put me down. <laughs> so yeah, um, so that's a, that obviously that's a flapper rig. So there you go. So what I'm gonna do is, guys, I'm gonna knock the camera off. I'm gonna I'm gonna make about four or five of these because obviously there's no point in me showing you over and over again because if people do get confused. At least what they can do is they can just go back in my video and watch it over again, you know, just watch like watch the same bits of the tricky bits kinda, you know, to how to make it. So at least you can just go back and do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another four or five of these and then I'll put the camera back on and I'll show you how to make a um a well a clip down rig basically, one like a long distance, chuck it up, bang it out into the tide run on like a beach or some of a place. Um, I'll show you how to make one of them. So I'll um, I'll get cracking with the rest of these rigs, and then I'll be back. I'll be back soon to make um, excuse me, to make a clip down rig. So I'll be back soon. All right, guys. Um, I'm just gonna um, well I've, I've made a rig here. Um, I don't. I'll, I'll just take you through it bit by bit, like what I've actually made. I've basically made um, well I used to use these rigs years ago, um, when a local angler showed me. Um, Tony, um, Tony uses these rigs as well. Um, sometimes even on the rocks for the cod. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. They're a good rig for like flatties as well. But this is one of um many rigs that I actually do use. But it's, it's like very basic to make. Eh? It doesn't take much to make. Um, basically, it's called a couple of names. I mean, you can call it a pulley bomber rig, or a double um, a double pulley rig. Basically, basically that's it all clipped down there. It's not a very long rig but it's very dynamic dynamic for like flying through the air when you for casting you know what i mean so um i'll show you that like little bits of it you've got your barrel swivel there that clips onto your main line your bead crimp swivel to that weird gemini clip there clips into there then you've got a barrel swivel attached to your gemini with another bead and a crimp attached to your, like a big um, Gemini clip there that clips down to there and obviously you can, if it's a little bit too long or you know you can obviously use them um, I use these for the beaches like for place fishing long distance these and then um, the same like grip leads that I've got the same um, tops as them and uh, there you go it's uh it's not a very um, difficult rig to make. Like I mean, I struggle because I haven't made it for years, but I got there eventually. There you are. So people can have a little flick through that um, if it helps them, of course. And um, that's not a bad rig to use off the beaches. Um, so yeah. Uh, but as I say, like normally I use a two flapper rig because obviously I do most of my place fishing there the, um, on the uh, on the piers. But like obviously I do some on the beaches as well. So, so yeah. Um. So I hope you all in. Um. I hope you all enjoyed uh, my rig making video. Um. On flatties, well, place basically. Oh, I was knocking. <laughs> um. I hope you all enjoyed it. Hopefully, you've you've learned something off it as well. And uh, hopefully, I'll be out next week trying to catch my first um place of the season. So hopefully, it'll all go well. And uh, hopefully, I can bag one for you for the camera. So yeah. Um. So yeah, so I hope you all um, managed to get out fishing. Um, I know that the North East lads will probably be out for the cod because obviously the, the wind's in the North East direction they're getting some decent swells again. So um, I reckon our cod season will be done now because obviously we're, we've got easterly winds still for another week. So it, it will clear the water up for the place as well. So that's a, that's a massive bonus for us, I suppose. Clear water, that's what you need for place. You will catch them in dirty water like... But, on the beaches, I've caught them in dirty water before, but on the local piers, it's dead because obviously you're fishing in like 20 foot, 20 foot of water. Um, I don't think the fish can see your bait, to be honest with you, because we've been fishing in that depth of water and it's dead dirty and cloud. They can't see it. It's mainly flounders you catch when it's like that. Um, but obviously, if you can see at least two or three, two or three feet down in the water, like clear, you'll catch place, definitely. You'll definitely catch them. If you can see through two or three feet of water, they'll definitely see through two two or three feet of water in clad in in like clear clarity, yeah. So, so yeah, um, so that's done now. 
rigs are done. So hopefully you've all learned something. I hope you have anyways. <laughs> it's been a while since I've made um, made these type of rigs. Be over a year ago on the flapper rigs anyways. And this rig, yeah, Christ, it's got to be two or three years ago at least. So at least I've, <laughs> I've had a go. <laughs> I don't know if it's 100% correct, like, but, oh, well. So, guys, I'll um I'll catch you later and um tight lines and please um like and subscribe as well. Um I think how oh, long's the channel been going for now? I think it's been going for well it's been going since October, so you're talking six months. And I know the average YouTuber, it takes them a full year to reach the first thousand subscribers. And I've had just a little nausea that I'm a YouTube channel and I'm on um eight hundred and ninety now. So in terms of like six months, I'm doing fantastic. Um, to nearly be at a thousand. Um, I'm not obviously not sponsored by anyone or anything like that. So, I'm just doing it on my Todd, and I'm doing all right. So, um, so yeah, uh, so if you could please, um, it's a line everywhere. If you could please, um, like and subscribe, guys. Uh, be a massive help, and if I can get to a thousand, that'll be absolutely amazing. Within, well, I reckon maybe three to three weeks to a month i reckon i'll be at a thousand subscribers so it'll be, obviously it's going to be seven months so I'll, it's a fantastic achievement for me pers for personally for myself if i can get get it by then like so yeah um so i hope you um, catch plenty of fish guys and um tight lines and hopefully um i'll see you with a nice dustbin lid so catch you later